Hello world, Taiwan has a lot of scooters, but you really can't tell from this shot, so let's switch it up. With 14 million scooters for its population of 24 million residents, there are six scooters for every 10 people. That easily makes Taiwan the country with the highest density of scooters. The reason I went to Taiwan was because I wanted to learn more about their electric scooters and specifically their scooter share service. The first thing that came to my mind in Taiwan, and specifically Taipei, was why are there so many scooters? I think for the residents on the ground, the answer is straightforward. It's often cheaper and faster than other forms of transportation, even the MRT. And if you're like me and hate acronyms, MRT stands for Mass Rapid Transit, which in this context means their train system. The system debuted in 1996, and I found it to be clean, on time, and overall fantastic. But the thing is that despite its 131 stations, it doesn't have coverage to all areas. And even when the stations are located where you want to go, you still have to walk to and from the platforms and have that admittedly small weight between trains. So for many routes, the scooter is often faster. Then there's the cost. One-way tickets are between 20 and 65 new Taiwan dollars, so like 0.63 to 2 US dollars. It doesn't sound like much, but with gas only costing about 100 NTD per 100 kilometers, or $3 US, riding a scooter is cheap. But there are two environmental problems with gas scooters. The first is air pollution. Emissions of volatile organic compounds, VOCs, a bouquet of carbon gases that are precursors for smog, were on average 124 times higher from an idling two-stroke scooter than for a vehicle from another class. This really surprised me, as I thought gas scooters would be the best environmental choice when compared against a car. And while it is on the CO2 front, it's not on the air quality front. The second problem with gas scooters is the noise. Have a listen for yourself. And oh, let me put the audio levels back to normal. To solve these problems while providing a clean energy alternative, in 2015, Gogoro introduced electric scooters and a network of charging stations where batteries could be quickly swapped. Since then, there are now 552,000 riders, 1.1 million smart batteries, and 2,400 battery swapping stations. To appreciate the battery swap tech, you need to see it from start to finish. To start, you open the seat and grab both batteries. You'll notice this guy is experienced by the way he supports his hand with his arm. Those batteries are heavier than they look. Now what happens is the system calculates and shows your usage. Using the Internet of Things, it knows who you are and automatically keeps a tally on you. Most people I saw took 30 to 40 seconds to do the whole battery swap process, from opening the seat to closing it. Two charged batteries will be released, which also leaves two empty slots for the next person. You drop the batteries in any which way you like, close your seat, and off you go. If you count the time it takes to pull in and out of the GO station, the whole swap takes just around a minute, which I think is incredibly fast. You probably noticed that no credit cards or other forms of payment were required. That's because if you want to use a scooter that runs on Gogoro's batteries, you must be subscribed to their battery swapping service. They already have your payment on file. What you've just witnessed is BAAS, Battery as a Service. This means there's no at-home charging. Instead, there are different subscription models that you can sign up for, kind of like a data plan for your smartphone. Actually, scratch that. I found that there is at-home charging, but Gogoro's financial reports indicate that nearly 100% of riders use the subscription service. Even though the riders I filmed seem very at ease with the weight, those batteries are surprisingly heavy. They're about 9 to 10 kilograms each, which is about 20 pounds. I wouldn't want to lug those up the stairs to charge them every day. With a lot of EVs, people are concerned with range. So how far can you go between battery swaps? Well, it depends on a few factors. The first is whether your scooter can carry one or two batteries. Obviously, a couple batteries will take you further. The second depends on the scooter itself and how efficiently it can convert that energy. The third is the age of the battery, as there are now three generations of batteries. 
The first generation will give you less distance than the third, which is not only newer, but has more capacity. There will be other factors such as weight on the scooter, terrain, and driving style. The latest 125cc equivalent, which has two batteries, claims a 170km range, while simpler models are half that. But that's with ideal conditions on a completely charged set of new batteries. Under non-ideal conditions, with first-generation batteries, I've heard the range can be significantly less. And a last thing to note is that they've introduced a solid-state battery prototype, which increases the storage capacity from 1.7 kilowatt hours to 2.5 kilowatt hours, and thus boosts range by 40%. However, it seems like it'll be a couple years until this tech makes it into the battery swap network. All right, so now that we understand the battery swap service, I want to talk about the whole reason I went to Taiwan, which is GoShare, Gogoro Scooter Share Program. For some reason, I had it in my mind that this share program was what most riders used, but I was very wrong. While I couldn't find the exact number of GoShare scooters available, it looks like the number is under 10,000. Remo, the pioneer in electric share scooters in Taiwan, had a fleet of 10,000 as of 2022, and all indications point to them having a bigger network than GoShare. Whatever the number, the GoShare program is relatively small in comparison to the 552,000 riders that use the Swap and Go network. But how GoShare, Wemo, and iRent all work is that you can pick them up and drop them off at any public parking spots in their respective service areas. You use your app to unlock the vehicle, take out the helmet from below, and off you go. That is, if you can find an available scooter. Depending on where you are and the time of day, you might have a bunch of scooters close by, or none at all. I couldn't personally see what availability was like, as it turns out you can't use GoShare if you're not a resident. But what you can do is rent a Gogoro scooter from a rental shop, which is exactly what we did. And because we figured the middle of Taipei wasn't a great place to start riding in Taiwan, we took the red line out to Tamsui. Or Danshui? It's by no means rural, but it's relatively calmer to ride around. My first issue with riding was that I didn't know how to position my GoPro, so the first shots I got were of the handlebars and smartphone. After a while, I smartened up and got some unobstructed footage. Always review your footage, folks. If you listen to the audio, you'll realize how much louder gas-powered scooters are than electric ones. Overall, I enjoyed my few hours with the scooter, but it was by no means enough time to give any kind of review. But I did manage to talk with someone who has taken many rides. The first thing like everyone concern is that they have no at the beginning they don't have sound because it's oh. like yeah that's very dangerous especially in this crowded mm -hmm, traffic mm -hmm. especially like all people they say no that's too dangerous to right. to ride it and now they more they adjust to the a little sound so when they ride it if you ride very fast you can hear like the the pop the sound. The power, the power station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because for me, I don't really know how to use the technique things. Oh, technology. Yeah, yeah, technology. A few years ago, when she first started using Gogoro, there weren't many stations, so she didn't like having to use the app to search for them. But nowadays, she said Go stations are found in many more places, as well as at regular gas stations and convenience stores, so it's not a big problem anymore. Because Gogoro is kind of like a LV scooter, like a very high class, so you worry you will damage it. They're more expensive than gas scooters, and it's probably something similar to Tesla's when they first entered the market, in that they were considered premium vehicles. I think the very hard part is for people to how to park it. If you want to park, you need to move the other scooter. Even it's way easier than the car, but you know the car once uh, one space just for one car, right? Mm. But in Taiwan, they will put two scooters in the one tiny space, and Gogolong is quite heavy actually. It doesn't look that big, but it's quite heavy. Compared to my school, it's way heavier. Yeah, I will worry about that because I spend more, but I, mean, I still need to care. What she was getting at was she didn't want her expensive Gogoro getting banged up in the parking spots. But in Taiwan, it's so crowded that it's kind of inevitable. If you want to carry your luggage, I mean, the regular scooter is not that pretty, but it's easy. You can carry a lot of stuff. Yeah, they will put a basket in the front and also, the, the underneath space, the gas one, is way bigger because no need power. But Google, they want to look at faction or something, so the design, they use a lot of curve or something. 
but it's not easy for you to pile your stuff. But I think they address that, but still, I don't, I think it's still the regular one, it's still better to carry, yeah. But I think for the most of the young generation, even about 40, I think they're okay with the gogo. If like about 15, they don't think that it's good because it's hard for them. Yeah, and I think because also uh, the scooter in Taiwan, the regular one, you can ride almost 20 years. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's very, yeah, like my scooter is almost 20 years. But I mean, the old people, they will think about like, can the gogo maintain right. that well? And also the maintain fee is quite expensive. Right. It's a good point about longevity, because even reading Gogoro's annual report, they stated that they should last around 10 years. My generation, they all like it, I guess. Yeah, because it's very friendly, like the, the eco, like the, because no gas, right? Mm -hmm. So how are sales of Gogoro scooters going? As I really enjoy new tech, I was caught a bit off guard that electric scooters only make up about 4% of Taiwan's total scooter market. Although that share is slowly increasing as 12% of new scooters purchased in 2022 were electric. And by 2040, the government has mandated that all passenger vehicles be electric. To encourage the transition, the government has been subsidizing the cost of electric scooters. In Taipei, they give up to 28,800 NTD when trading in a gas scooter, or 19,000 NTD without one. This can cover about a quarter or a third of the cost of a new electric scooter. And Gogoro had help with about half of the 2,400 GO stations, with 657 being subsidized by the government and 300 built by Taiwan's national oil company, CPC Corporation. At the city level, Taipei has waivers for fuel taxes and license fees for electric scooters. On top of that, they will provide free parking until they reach a share of 13.5% of all scooters. So, with an impressive network of stations and subsidies in place, I thought electric scooter sales of Gogoro would be continually growing. But sales have flatlined recently. Their latest second quarter results in 2023 show that sales of hardware dropped by 10% year over year. This is in contrast to the powered two-wheelers market, where sales in Taiwan were up 13.4% year over year. Gogoro attributes this to consumers being price sensitive and opting for the cheaper gas-powered models. However, usage of their battery network continues to grow, as revenues for that were up 10% year over year. And the total number of subscribers hit a high of 552,000, which is up from 484,000 year over year. I should also note that as of this time, the cost of the battery swap service per kilometer is more expensive than the cost of fuel per kilometer for gas scooters. This is different from what you see with cars, where electric is cheaper on a per kilometer basis in most areas. So if you think about it, Gogoro is partly like a finance company because you're renting the battery service. By taking the cost of the battery out of the purchase price of the scooter, they can lower the initial price of the vehicle for customers. Battery subscription continues to provide revenue year after year. Gogoro estimates that for every $1 of hardware purchased, another $1 of subscription revenue will be generated over the expected 10-year life of the vehicle. Gogoro also licenses their tech to other scooters, and between Gogoro scooters and Gogoro branded scooters, they represent 90% of electric two-wheeler sales in 2022. So what about the battery swap market outside of Taiwan? Well, right now, 95% of Gogoro's revenue comes from Taiwan, and that percentage is expected to remain the same throughout 2023. But there are over 500 million scooters around the world, and 50 million are purchased every year. It's a big market. While Gogoro hopes to tap into this, the biggest roadblock seems to be the cost of both the vehicles and operating them. The big markets they're going for, like India, Indonesia, and Vietnam, where two-wheelers make up 85-90% to 90 of all registered vehicles, are also much less wealthy than Taiwan. For example, the GDP per capita in Vietnam is around 5,000 USD, compared to around 34,000 USD in Taiwan. Knowing that even in Taiwan, the cost of ownership of electric scooters is already a major issue, one can only imagine how much more it's problematic in these less wealthy nations. The other key factor is probably building out the network of battery swap stations. In Taiwan, Gogoro received financial aid from the government for its initial build-out. While the charging stations are relatively inexpensive to install versus gas stations, it's still a barrier to entry versus gas-powered vehicles, which don't have to worry about creating an infrastructure of refueling stations as they already exist. As for wealthier markets, there are scooters ridden, of course, but there's nowhere near the same penetration level. It makes me wonder how many users, and how dense the network of battery swap stations needs to be, 
in order for a system like this to succeed. Personally, I really love the swappable battery tech and hope to see it successful in many other countries besides Taiwan. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peace.